Well, when you're on a river like this, floating in a canoe, things slow down, you know, you start to move on a different pace. And you become more aware of the linear nature of a river. And you start to realize that this is a, a pathway for, for fishes and, and other aquatic organisms to move and the routes they have to take through this to spawn in the springtime. You know, historically, you know, a person could, could start in North Georgia and continue down the river to New Orleans. You know, now you, you can't necessarily do that in a canoe. Most of the rivers are, for the most part, dammed completely. So this is, you know, a unique river in the Southern Appalachians in that it's undammed, free flowing, and it still contains what we believe to be most of the fauna that was here originally. When most people think of biodiversity and the profusion of life and species on the planet, they think of, they think of rainforests and they think of coral reefs, you know, they think of these exotic places. But right here in the southeastern United States, we have, you know, in our care, some examples of, of some of the greatest biodiversity in fresh waters on the planet. It's much more of a stretch uh, for folks to grasp, but there are freshwater mussels that live in these rivers. Just like the fish, mussels exist in the southeast in a great variety of species and, and forms and shapes. The southeastern U.S. is home to nearly 200 freshwater mussel species, more than anywhere else in the world. And yet they may be one of the most overlooked creatures in these rivers. But the mussels have a remarkable secret of their own. And it's almost unimaginable what they do within their hidden world. There at the bottom of a river, half buried in gravel and sand, looking just like another rock, Inconspicuous and unnoticed, they go about their lives, pumping water through their bodies, not only to breathe, but to feed on the tiny bits of food that drift in the current, an act that helps remove silt and sediments from the water and actually purifies a river. And they do that 24 hours a day, every day of their life. They can't swim, they can barely crawl, and so they may live their entire life confined to one small area of a river. But they want their young to spread out into new places. And so when it is time to breed, the female mussel uses trickery to entice certain neighbors to come near. She might mimic a crayfish, a fish, an insect, to lure a hungry fish close close enough to where she might be able to spring her larvae right into their mouth. Or even closer, where she can trap them. and wash her tiny larvae all over them. And send them off as the carrier of her offspring and hope that their natural movements and migrations will bring her babies to a healthy place with a nice clean stream bed and clean water. It all depends on the host she uses and the places they roam. And the stronger these relationships, the clearer the water will run. And the fact is, of all the aquatic life in Southern Appalachian rivers, mussels are in the greatest need of help. Usually mussels, once they make a home somewhere, they pretty much stay in that general area. They're these stationary organisms. And so if you have some sort of catastrophic event, they can't really get out of harm's way. And so they're one of the first things to disappear. 
and they're one of the most imperiled groups of organisms on the planet. You know, if you think about the changes in our uh, river systems, the biggest and most widespread change that has led to the demise of, of mussels is, is the damming of our rivers. If you take a flowing stretch of river and you put a dam on it, and it's now 10, 20, 50, 100 feet deep, that's not a habitat that most freshwater mussels can occupy. We have a precious few of these things left in a precious few places. And luckily, you know, we have these places that have survived and, and have, these, have these animals left that we can take from and use those to repopulate some of the other areas that have recovered. But, you know, time will tell if we keep these things going forward. The truth is that most of this region's mussel species are imperiled and several have gone extinct in the last century. And so biologists are now taking desperate measures to take what mussels they can from stable populations so that they can grow young mussels in captivity to release into rivers where they have been lost in hopes of not losing these precious creatures that are part of an interconnected ecosystem.